Edward Thorpe is the father of card counting and the godfather of quantitative investing. He is best described as the world's leading expert in devising strategies to beat games. From blackjack to finance, he has launched a revolution in beating the market and the dealer. He was a troublemaker early in life, making his first appearance in the local paper by pouring red dye into California's largest indoor pool. He experimented with his own homemade nitroglycerin and rigged a high-powered spotlight to scare away young couples at a local lover's lane. He showed early signs of genius, skipping a grade and becoming one of the youngest people in the country to pass an exam on radio theory and Morse code. His life was not without hardship, however. He was born in the Great Depression and his parents were occupied with long hours of work and caring for his sick brother. He learned to explore the world around him and think for himself, always validating any claim by himself without taking anyone's word for it. At the age of 17, as he packed up for college, his mother stole from him. Cashing out the war bonds that he bought with his paper route money and running off, Thorpe was left to survive off of $100 a month as an undergraduate. Supporting himself with scholarship money and help from his father, he was forced to visit church open houses and scrounge for free hot chocolate and donuts. After earning his PhD from UCLA, he spent some time teaching and doing research. He and his wife took a trip to Vegas for the Christmas holidays, and there, Thorpe took an interest in blackjack. To his wife's dismay, he lost $8.50 of his original $10 before leaving. Thorpe was now determined to conquer blackjack. The belief that casinos must come out ahead in the long run was supported by conventional wisdom, which argued that if blackjack could be beaten, the casinos would have to either change the rules or drop the game. Neither had happened. But I wasn't willing to accept these claims about blackjack. I decided to check for myself if the player could systematically win. Thorpe accepted a teaching position at MIT, where he was able to rub shoulders with great minds like John Nash and Claude Shannon. He had access to an IBM 704 and taught himself Fortran. After months of computation and man hours, he was able to determine that playing basic strategy with a full deck of cards gives you a 0.13% chance of beating the casino. He had some intuition as to how these odds could be improved. Other casino games, like slot machines, are driven by independent events. A deck of cards being depleted over a number of rounds, however, is not. Imagine a series of coin flips. The chances of getting four heads in a row is low, but which way would you bet on the fifth coin flip? Would you say it's more likely to be heads or tails? Well, if you guessed tails, you've fallen prey to the gambler's fallacy. The chances of getting four heads and one tail is actually the same as getting five heads in a row. Each coin flip is an independent event. In other words, the flips of the past and the future have no effect on each flip. But in a deck of cards, Thorpe wondered how your odds would look if four aces were missing from the deck. Well, it turns out that the casino had an edge of 2.7%. If four 10 value cards were missing, your chances are even worse. Conversely, Thorpe realized that taking out small value cards like 2s, 3s, 4s, and 5s helped the player. Thorpe shared his findings with Claude Shannon, who realized that the work of John Kelly would optimize the amount of money he bets. Using the Kelly criterion, Thorpe had a more profitable system to take on the casinos. In 1961, he published Fortune's Formula, a winning strategy for blackjack. The Washington Post and the Herald Tribune picked up his story, and soon the MIT math department was flooded with letters, keeping secretaries busy for weeks. A benefactor reached out to him to test the strategy, at first offering Thorpe $100,000 to play with. Thorpe instead agreed to take on a stake of $10,000. During his time off from teaching at MIT, he and his benefactor took on Vegas. With 30 man hours of play, their initial $10,000 had grown to $21,000. Thorpe would go on to publish Beat the Dealer, teaching thousands how to beat casinos at blackjack and launching a revolution of professional gamblers. Beat the Dealer suggested using a high-low strategy, which had become the most popular for its simplicity and effectiveness. It's the one featured in the movie 21. Casinos would start barring professional card counters. They would reshuffle decks more frequently and add more decks into play in an attempt to lower the player's edge. Blackjack was not the only game he took an interest in. 
Thorpe and Claude Shannon were also trying to gain an edge in roulette, developing the first wearable device to do so. Thorpe and Shannon got a roulette wheel of their own and designed a computer the size of a cigarette pack. You could press a button on the device each time the ball on the wheel spun past you. The device would then transmit tones to an earpiece so you know which eighth of the wheel to bet on. Eventually, Thorpe would take on the biggest casino in the world, Wall Street. He taught himself the basics of investing using Benjamin Graham and David Dodd's security analysis. Thorpe teamed up with Dr. Sheen Kasauf and published Beat the Market in 1967. Beat the Market focused on delta hedging using common stock and warrants. Warrants are mathematically identical to stock options, except that they are sold by the corporation itself as opposed to a market maker. Their work focused on determining the fair price of a warrant, and whenever the warrant was overpriced, they would short the warrant and hedge their bet by buying the corresponding stock. Beat the Market would serve as a manifesto for quantitative investing, inspiring finance titans like Fisher Black and Ken Griffin. Thorpe would team up with Jay Reagan, who himself read Beat the Market and kickstarted a fund. He would be able to stay in Newport Beach while Reagan set up an office in Princeton, New Jersey. They named their firm Princeton Newport Partners. Thorpe would work on his formulas for pricing securities, using the ideas of Einstein's Brownian motion and the works of mathematician Louis Bachelier. Thorpe had independently discovered the famous Black-Scholes option pricing formula. In his autobiography, he wrote, "Hedging risk was not new, but we took it to an extreme never before tried. To begin with, we designed each of our hedges, which combined the stock and convertible securities of a single company, to minimize the risk of loss whether the stock fell or rose. We invented hedging techniques to further protect our portfolio against changes in interest rates, changes in the level of the overall market, and the catastrophic losses that can occasionally occur from enormous unexpected changes in prices and volatility. We managed this with mathematical formulas, economic models, and computers. This nearly total reliance on quantitative methods was unique, making us the earliest of a new breed of investors who would later be called quants, and who would radically transform Wall Street. Their partnership earned an annual rate of 22.8% before fees, and limited partners saw their wealth grow at 18.2%. They had no losing years or even quarters. They deployed state-of-the-art convertible bond, warrant, and option models, eventually becoming the biggest player in the Japanese warrant market. They used statistical arbitrage. They had a computerized analytic model and trading system for common stocks using a real-time feed of the stock ticker into their computer center. They had traded between 1 and 2 million shares a day, making them 1-2% of the New York Stock Exchange's daily volume. After surviving the chaos of Black Monday in 1987, PNP would be faced with another storm. The IRS and FBI raided the Princeton office. As part of a Wall Street witch hunt, Rudy Giuliani tried to get information against Mike Milken of Drexel Burnham and Rob Freeman of Goldman Sachs. Giuliani used the RICO statute, which is a set of laws used against mobsters, to subpoena limited partners. Although the Newport Beach office had nothing to do with the investigation and the traitor involved, PNP was burnt out by legal fees and time wasted. In 1988, PNP started to wind down. With better luck, PNP might still be around today. Ed Thorpe is still around at the time of making this video. He spends his time with his family and is likely still working away at strategies to beat games. Although he certainly made a fortune for himself and for his partners, it seems that he was motivated more by the intellectual challenge of what he accomplished. Using the power of abstract thinking, he was able to embark on a life of adventure, beating both the casino and Wall Street. If you're hoping to learn more about him, I'd suggest reading his autobiography, A Man for All Markets. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Till next time.